Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to Thrones of Britannia. In today's battle, we're going to be taking a look at the Siege of Winchester as the Welsh try and conquer the seafaring Vikings who currently hold the city. As they're approaching, the forces of the seafaring Vikings have pushed up a nice force ready to defend the outer bridge and keep them at bay for as long as possible, allowing the rest of the city to form up. However, the Welsh are burning and pillaging as they go, setting fire to the nearby towns and pushing up their siege towers. It should be a really exciting battle. I should mention though, before we do get started into this replay, that this is obviously still a work in progress. There's still stuff to be done to the game, so a lot of the bugs you, we might encounter during this battle will obviously be fixed before launch and obviously things are still subject to change so yes let's go ahead and jump straight into the battle and watch this epic siege engagement unfold Okay guys, we are now in the battle. The forces of the Welsh are pillaging through the towns as they get closer and closer to my outer defence. This is going to be so much fun watching our brothers fight to the death outside the city. This is really, really cool and it's a nice position which you can probably rush towards. Obviously I set this up, but it's something you could probably actually do before the enemy do get in range. If we look at the full Welsh force, we can see that they have the main contingent of their army just outside here in the east part of the map. And then over in the north, they do have a smaller contingent, which is made up of quite a few elite units. The rest of the Welsh army as well. You know, it's very, very deadly and ready to do battle. So before we do get straight away into this battle, I do want to mention that Thrones of Britannia has been delayed by a couple weeks. It was originally supposed to come out on the 19th of April, and that has been pushed back to the 3rd of May. So the new release date is the 3rd of May. I personally think that's absolutely fine. If they need more time to work on the game, I would much prefer they go ahead and do that then go ahead and release an unfinished product and then end up you know patching it in a couple weeks anyway i'd much rather just allow them to have that hard time to work on the game because friends of britannia is shaping up to be one hell of a game and i'm really really excited to see how it is going to go down because the mechanics and stuff of what i've played is just really really good and it is kind of an homage back to the older total wars with the more in-depth uh, with the more in-depth mechanics and stuff and i mean this shield war alone is just beautiful especially you can get outside the walls. We have our archers as well on pond the walls, ready to volley down as the battle does commence here. And here we go, the first charge of the battle, the Welsh versus the Sea Vikings, who is going to come out on top. Now, the Welsh do have some really elite archers. They have the longbowmen, who are just beyond deadly. They will incinerate my lightly armoured archers, and I will stand no chance. Whereas the majority of the strength in my force does definitely lay with my berserkers. I'm not sure if we can find any of them. Is this a unit of my berserkers? Yeah, these guys are beastly, man. They will just tear apart the enemy. There's only 80 of them in a unit, I believe. Yeah, there's only 80 of them in, a, in the unit, whereas the enemy infantry has 160. So definitely not as many as you would normally see, but the quality is unmatched. And here we go. The archer fire from the longbows going in. Not only do they have better range than me, but they also have better missile damage. Why don't you take a little look at them right here? And the arrow fire is just raining down, taking out my missile advantage. My second line of shield wall is ready to take them on if this line does break. Does look like Apollo is throwing up some of his axemen as well, though. The Welsh forces using that axe infantry to try and break up that shield wall, which is a sensible decision, right? The shield wall is going to be vulnerable to that axe infantry. The other forces haven't quite got ready to move up yet. They are just making their way up now, pushing up these siege towers. And I don't really have a very elite force over here whatsoever. So this Welsh infantry, with the support of their longbows, will have, might have an easy way of taking out the city. I'm also really excited that we are getting these 360 sieges back again because this is so much fun. Having not only fighting outside the city here, you can see my archers just routing. Not only fighting outside the city, we're fighting on the walls and we're fighting on multiple fronts. And it's just really fun to go ahead and take back to these old sieges where multiple attacks can come and this is just a one verse one imagine what a four verse four would be or a two verse two of large armies will be like it'll be so much fun because you will have so many parts of the city burning and these cities are extremely large you know this is supposed to be a massive city so because of that you want to be having all these street fights you want walls to be getting fought over whilst the rest of the city is also being fought over as well 
God, imagine being this second line, just watching your brothers. And also, look at this. Look how awesome this battle line is back here with them forming, the Welsh forming their own shield wall back there as well, saying that not one man will escape here. This is Stamford Bridge. Instead of one berserker, we have a whole line of them. And the Welsh are a refusing, or I guess, escape from any of their own men. So if any of the Welsh soldiers feel like they've had enough and they want to try and retreat, this shield wall will, will keep them back in the battle. Just basically caging in this fight and everyone is fighting for the amusement of the battle we also have some of the archers firing in as well they're going to be raining down the missile fire obviously they're going to be doing too much damage to the shield wall which is you know specifically designed to hold the enemy back and also absorb missile fire but, you know, it's good to put down some suppression and maybe we'll get lucky with a few extra kills. Something I should note as well during these battles is I was really, really impressed with just how long the battles lasted. I played uh, this battle and I think it lasted for something like 30 odd minutes, which was a great battle time. For a siege, I think that was the perfect time. For a 1 vs 1 large armies battle, 30 minutes in a siege battle was just the perfect timer. So I'm really optimistic for just Thrones of Britannia and the battles being a great improvement from Attila Total War because again I felt Attila was just way too short in its engagements units seemed to die really quickly whereas if we take a look at this two elite units we're like five minutes into the battle and my shield walls are holding now granted these guys do have some experience but these are two very good infantry units going up against one another and they're just holding which I think very much speaks to the error of the of the time because you know these this error was all about the shield walls clashing and you know sides fighting one another and just a back and forth so as it's nice to see that kind of represented with these shield wall units actually just lasting a decent amount of time. The West Wall, the Northern Wall has now been breached. The siege towers have hit the walls and it's going to be up to my Huskals right here to destroy and break them down. Now, obviously, if I was any unit I'd want to be fighting this, it is these guys right now. I think at the moment my vision is skewed over here, but I will be noticing this very soon and actually giving the attack order for these guys to group around and assault. Same over here as well. You can see more of the Welsh heavy infantry making their way up. It's a little bit hard, I guess, to tell who's here, but you can obviously tell by the shield colours the more, the more colourful ones are going to be the Welsh and mine are going to be the more brown and grey. So I do actually bring up more infantry here. Uh, they're going to be committed over here. But yeah, I don't really have a lot in this side of the fortress. My main fortress is over here. And my main force is over here, guarding that part of the wall. So this is a great opportunity for Apollo just to dominate me here. I do bring back some of my, my javelins because I want to try and get some javelin throws into the side of the Welsh forces if I can. Because I know they'll go down extremely quickly if these javelins can get, you know, you know, right into the side. Ignore that huge shield. They can kill them very, very quickly. Then if we also look down by the gate, I've also got a beautiful shield all set up. So if they do break down this, which I think they do have a battering ram or maybe not. I think they'll all just use their infantry to break that down. And that's fine with me. We can fight that. Again, if we go back to the bridge, you can see I am slowly losing them, but... I'm holding, you know, I'm pretty impressed with how well the soldiers have done to, to make it this far and, you know, not be routed. This has been a good seven minute hold with just two units of infantry who are under missile fire, who are under, you know, good infantry fire. I couldn't have asked for anything more. I think Apollo as well is also now bringing up his siege towers. Yeah, these are going to be horrendous when they hit my wall because I just don't think I have enough men to defend this. If you look at the balance of power right now, you can see that I'm down to 3,000 men, whereas my enemy, the Welsh, have over 5,000. So, again, just an intense battle going on right now. And this is really good for me because the longer this line can hold, the longer this shield wall can keep the enemy back in at bay, the better my other flank will do because I can deploy more men over there. I think if anything, I'm actually sending more men right now if I look. No, I'm not sending men yet, yet, but I believe... Oh, here we go, right here. I'm going to be sending two units of my berserkers. And again, you, as I said in the beginning, these guys are just insane. Especially when they go on a rampage. And we can see some of the seafaring Viking units right there. And I also love this as well. It's a really nice addition, kind of their flags being kind of like a ship sail. Is a really, really cool uh, kind of cosmetic thing for them. Going back to the North Wall, though, we can see the Welsh are being pinned in. And the, the Huskals, with, along with the, the Swordsmen, I believe these guys are Herdmen? Eastman, Herdmen, yeah. They're, they're doing a great job at just kind of keeping this Wel Welsh push at bay. Not letting them get too out of control. 
However, we do have some more Welshmen coming into my flank now. I'm going to be reasserting that. And the longbows are just firing away. And if they come up against any lightly armored targets, they will just take them apart. The extra range on the longbows is going to make the Welsh archers a very, very deadly foe. Along, if you couple that with their infantry as well, the Welsh are going to be a very strong faction. I think it's going to be hard to deal with them. Especially when, you know, I don't really have anything to counter that whatsoever as the seafaring Vikings, because they obviously definitely rely on their heavy infantry like their berserkers. Oh, some of the javelins now flying up. I think a few of them. Oh, look at that slaughter. A couple of them are bouncing into the stone and, and going off, but we got some nice kills there. More infantry, though, are arriving for the Welsh force, and they're going to be, you know, meeting out at this wall very, very soon, and again, just overwhelming me still. I cannot believe that finally my formation has now been broken. The siege towers are making their way forward, and I have made for a full-on retreat. I'm going to be pushing some soldiers back, allowing a little defense at the gate to slow up the enemy. The catapult's coming in, though, trying to smash down this gate, already taking out one tower as well. The cries of battle being heard across. So we, I have a couple units of infantry, and basically these infantry are just here to slow up the enemy forces, keep them, you know, kind of push back and allowing my archers to rack up some kills. You can see my archers are now volleying down. My archers aren't very good, and I imagine a lot of these heavier shield walls will be able to nullify pretty much all the missiles coming in. I think my gate has been smashed down now. Yeah, the gate has gone down. However, the gate house is still up. You can see there's only 80% damage done to the gate house. So because of that, this is going to still shoot down burning oil. So when the enemy try and push forward, the Welsh try and break it. I should be okay there. I, I don't think I will suffer too many casualties um, at the gate. I can use it to my advantage. Same right here as well. Burning oil going down. And that's already such a deadly thing. That's why it's always a good thing to try and take out the gatehouse as well. Because you can use that to your advantage. I mean, look how many Welsh soldiers I've already taken out just with the oil. That's going to really help me out considering how outnumbered we are. The fighting on the wall is brutal as more and more Welsh soldiers push up and it's just a back and forth. Not really any side taking the walls right now. However, my numbers are just dwindling on this left side. You can see the balance of power really going down right now. However, you can, the Welsh numbers are actually going down very quickly as well because we are just hitting them with that arrow fire. Now the towers have made their way up. It's very hard for me to push up. And I mean, look at this. These guys have been given the order. This is where they meet Valhalla. They will not give up this gate without a fight and they will all meet the grave. They have been told that they will be met with, with a wonderful feast of their amazing deeds in battle. And this shield will, will have to hold and guard the gate. They cannot be overwhelmed. Look at that as well. You're right, boys. Just chilling in there, ready for battle. That's awesome. The rest of the siege towers are going to be meeting the wall very, very soon, though. And we will see the, the drawbridge type thing coming down. I don't really have any good units up here. So this is kind of a bit of a mistake on my part. Is I only really have archers up here. You'll see me notice like any second now. Again, I feel like I was too focused over on the other side of the battle. And kind of getting like just watching the battle myself. Because I feel like I do that quite a lot. I always am in YouTuber mode most of the time whenever I'm playing these battles. And this unit of infantry, actually, I believe, do manage to break one of their swordsman units. I think this was one of the ones which are exhausted, so they're not going to be fighting as efficiently. And they're actually going to be getting pushed back, which is amazing. This fresh, eager unit is doing the damage. Same over here as well. You can see these guys being surrounded by the Welsh axemen and swordsmen. For staying true to their honour, staying true to their creed. So the West were, yeah, this is the West. Yeah, the West Wall is now finally under attack. I am now finally starting to push up some hostiles to match this infantry. But it's going to take me a little while to actually get up there. Um, and this is going to give my enemy perfect time to actually make his way up there himself and try and fight. The battle over at the gatehouse as well is going down. But that burning oil is just coming in huge right now. Even if it just kills a couple dudes, that's going to help us out so much. Because this shield wall right here won't be going down easily. And I'm even going a little bit aggressive 
bringing the, the last ditch of my reserves. You can see right now, I'm pushing in everything I have because the walls are being taken by the Welsh. And this is just my last ditch effort to try and hold this force up. Because if this army can get through and this part of the force make their way through the city, burning and pillaging as they go, then that's going to, one, hurt my melee attack and stuff. But it's also going to open up my flanks whilst I'm still busy fighting here. I want this both these battles to kind of end at the same time if I can help it. Right here we have some berserkers who are going to be given the orders soon to go and take that. They're still just waiting for my command. I'm even pushing up my general right now to try and keep this attack at bay like any true Viking should. So he's going to be making his way to them front lines with his elite axemen and swordsmen. And basically just trying to send the Welsh back to whence they came. The siege towers are going to give them a great opportunity to continue their way up. My archers, I believe, have all retreated back and they're going to be volleying over the walls and trying to go all helm's deep on the invading army. Uh, but it looks like a few of my arrows are actually finding their backs of my soldiers. I guess they're not really too well positioned right now. The lone archer who thinks he can get his shot over is clearly not working too well. The Welsh still have some really good units left. A lot of spearmen, uh, which isn't going to be too effective. But again, any high tier unit is good enough, along with some more swordsmen. These guys heavily armoured right now. And also the cavalry as well, and a lot of skirmishers. These skirmishers are going to be a big issue for me, because they're just going to shred through my battle line. Obviously the, the general unit as well. The battle cry is just going out. I love that. I've always said that in Total War, how I wish there was always more battle sounds in the game. You know, like people screaming of injuries and just making it more dark and gritty. So I, I do like how you have that more feel. Instead of just like swords clashing and stuff, you know, this area is also known for a lot of war cries and stuff. So to have more of that involved in the battle is just a great addition to the game, I think. One of the things I would love to see though, an improvement to these siege battles, is giving artillery more ammunition, but and making the walls tougher and making the gate tougher. I feel like at the moment it does kind of feel like the walls go down very easily, and that's just what Attila does, and it does make sense because I understand the battle wants to be more, like a bit more fast-paced and all, but I would really like to see you know, the walls just lasting up a bit longer. So it takes a while to bombard the city and destroy the walls and then allow you to then, you know, kind of maybe you're already fighting over some walls. A breach point opens and then you come charging forward, you know, and it just completely changes up how the battle's played and makes it really interesting. So I feel like that could be a great addition to the game. But again, you know, stuff like that, you know, small tweaks like that, you know, that's what mods are for, right? The Huskles on the front line cheering, but I need to go ahead and get some kills. The Welsh are really putting up a fight, but also my last reserves are finally in. I feel like, yeah, the Welsh are finally going to be pushing in their soldiers as well. These longbows are out of ammunition, and they're just going to charge in weight of numbers right now. But again, the burning oil coming down. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And they're going to be trying to just use their weight of numbers to break the shield wall right now, which is a smart idea, especially if they can claim victory right there. If we look at the other side of the wall, we can see my berserkers are now fighting, and these guys are really good, as I've said. Uh, they are actually surrounded, though, but again, that's probably the best situation the berserkers can be in, because then they just go on a rampage. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it if I hover over it. The unit, I'm not sure if I can show it or not, it will pop up if they go berserk. Well, they have an ability which allows them to go berserk and basically just hammer the enemy units, and it's just a really nice unit. You guys will see it really coming in clutch towards the end of a battle. So I've definitely, you know, helped uh, even out the battle somewhat. I'm down to 1,800 men and the Welsh are down to 3,000. So they definitely, you know, have a lot of soldiers to keep on pushing up, but I've definitely evened out the battle a little bit. If we take a look from the over school map, we can see the Welsh forces still in force, pushing up more and more soldiers right here. I still have a small vanguard, bringing my general off the wall, and I'm actually starting to make my little retreat right here bringing soldiers back to the city center. And this is something I didn't notice until I was in the battle. Look how cool this is. Small stuff like this is amazing. We can actually go into like a fortified little town bit and hold a shield wall here. Now, this is so cool. And I really wish they do more of this in future. There was a modded map in in Medi in Attila, I think actually, which allowed you to go through all down all these streets and everything. And it was really, really cool to see because you could actually like go down all these streets and 
and make up loads more breaches and stuff. And I think that's something really exciting. Again, I'm not sure if you can go down these streets. I don't think you can, but you might be able to, to be honest. It's something I didn't check. But it's really cool because it just opens up a lot more attacking points in the battle. And it just allows the battle to be a lot more dynamic and a lot less choke pointy. And I feel like because of that, you can make the battles much more enjoyable. And instead of just like a massive grind fest, opening up all these side streets and going through people's gardens and stuff allows you to just like outflank the, the defenders and really use everything at your disposal instead of just going down two or three streets. But again, it's not like this map is going down two or three streets. It is huge and absolutely awesome. So very exciting. Does it look like though the Welsh have started to deploy the last of their forces? The walls though being claimed. The Welsh armour, the very iconic Welsh armour right there. The, the walls are covered. I imagine this flag will be changing very soon if not already. I mean my force, this is kind of like the last force I left down here as a, as a rear guard right now to allow everyone else to fall back. I'm also bringing back my soldiers over here. Uh, again, just everyone back to the city centre now. That is where we're going to make our last stand. And again, I'll mention it once again. Like, battle time. Like, this has felt like a really ex enjoyable, exciting battle. Lots of back and forth, you know. Having the initial assault outside the city, kind of trying to slow up the enemy forces was really fun. And with the, the skill of shield wall giving you so much missile block, it's not like you have to worry about being shot to pieces. Because a lot of the times in older Total Wars, whenever you'd run across the, that situation um, of putting soldiers outside the wall, you would end up just getting shot to pieces. But having that shield wall pretty much nullifies a lot of the enemy damage because you've got these huge circular shields covering everything. So it's actually a valid strategy because that would delay the enemy. And if, for example, I was to have held like here with like a, squ a circle square box or something like that, my archers could have also have volleyed down. Obviously, I held here because it looked cooler, but I definitely could have held along here and, and made it more, uh, you know, made it more strategically available because then the arrow fire could have volleyed over and we could have gone all Troy on the arse of the Welsh forces. But it does look like they're going to break through now. And this is looking sketchy for me. I have my javelin run. This is going to be a deadly foe. They're going to be pinning down quite a few of the Welsh infantrymen. So I'm definitely losing on numbers. I've lost the walls themselves. Bands of Power is looking still very much in favour of the Welsh. However, however, I have fatigue on my side. The enemy forces have been fighting. Pretty much the entire enemy army has been fighting. And I'm going to be using that to my advantage. Bringing up some of these guys and I think I'm going to be sending up some infantry soon. I have more skirmishes set up. My infantry isn't looking great. My general unit right here. And it's just up to my berserkers. I believe I do have some berserkers up on this left hand side right now. I do indeed. 61 of them left. And they are just ferocious. It'd be cool if you get like a variant. I guess they are like huskles. But it'd be cool if you kind of like design the variant of your berserker unit. I mean, how awesome would that be in a Total War game? Actually being able to design your units. So instead of recruiting, like, instead of recruiting just individual units, you actually get to, like, design them yourself. So you get to design what sword, shield, armor you get. And you kind of obviously get the extra armor through buildings and technology. And you kind of almost outfit your army. Imagine kind of like Stellaris, where you design your ships, but you do that with infantry. That'd be really cool. Now, I imagine it's super hard to do with, like, all the different variants and stuff um, and generating them and giving them all animations and stuff, but that'd be really, really cool, actually being able to craft your own army and kingdom. That would be sick. That's actually a really good idea. CA, please. That'd be a lot of fun. So the Welsh forces have now broken upon the barricade burning as they go so this is something which is actually in front of britannia as well if a unit has the raiding trait they'll actually break off in midst of a battle and just go and burn these buildings which is really cool you know if they run past a set of buildings and they have the raiding trait they'll actually go and start you know burning buildings and that's a very effective because it does start to reduce settlement damage and the more settlement damage the, the less abilities and, and stuff i have myself so as you can see the welsh are pushing in with their final assault right now the Welsh javelin man, my general actually being surrounded. This was really bad on my part, being completely surrounded right now. And then the other Welsh spear unit is going to come up very soon and completely envelop me. I'm going to be sending men very soon to go and support this position, but this was just a huge mistake on my part. 
And it's going to put my general into a sandwich situation. You can see right there, just throwing up anything I can to try and relieve and give my general some space. Because if I lose my general, this battle is near but completely over. I do have some more infantry finally coming over. These guys are exhausted though. They've run all the way from the north part of the city back here. And now they're going to have to go ahead and just immediately get straight away back into battle. We can see they are very, very tired. And um, they're going to have to go in though and try and save my general. The rest of my forces are surrounded, but I do have them berserkers on my side. And it's going to be up to the berserkers to do something in this battle. Because they are my last reserve. They are my vanguard. And I just have to hope that I've chewed down the Welsh forces enough. These javelins into my side as well. Hopefully these long shields will be able to hold. But that's going to just take out so many of my men. And really rack up a lot of kills. Did my general get killed? Or is he still alive? My general did actually rout. And I believe he is still alive. He managed to get out of that sandwich with the support of my reinforcements. I'm going to be pushing in the last unit. Again, these guys are exhausted. And we're going up against fresh infantry as well. The spear guard. They are spears and I'm swords, so I might stand a chance, but I doubt it. We also have this unit over here on the far left, the Berserker unit. 75 of them left in the battle. And they've got 170 kills already. And they are just going to be fighting heavily for the walls right now. The rest of the Welsh force is almost spent. They do have some more soldiers coming over, though, which I'm trying to slow up as best I can with my cavalry. But obviously, you know, this is Viking cavalry. It's never going to be elite, especially because these are the seafaring Vikings as well. They're never really going to do too much. I'm also setting up another unit of berserkers, but the issue is these guys are just exhausted as they're going to charge in ferociously very soon and, and try and get that damage. I love the way they charge as well, like true berserkers. And at this point, it starts to go into God's hands because a lot of my Berserker units do just go Berserk and I can't control them anymore. So it is literally just down to the, the skill of my men, the ferociousness of my Vikings, that they'll be able to break down the enemy lines and claim victory right now. I am being completely surrounded. But I might have torn away enough of the enemy forces. And here you go. We're starting to actually push back and rout some of the spear guard. Apollo is starting to throw them in. He has some Welsh armoured swords here along with his javelins. But his infantry is starting to dwindle. The numbers are starting to get close. And I'm starting to use, you know, my advantage of this heavy infantry. Granted, it is really tired and is not fighting at 100% uh, performance. But the fact that they're, they're still as good as they are is coming in big. I'm throwing more and more infantry in right now, trying to keep up the pressure as best as I can. If I can break these spear infantry with my general and also the help of the herdman, then I can then go and abuse this flank, send this flank round, and maybe try and kill his general. Because if I can kill the Welsh general, that is going to be huge. And I mean, look at this Berserker unit. This Berserker unit has actually almost managed to rout all of the forces coming in from the north side of the map. This battle is going to go down to the wire. And it's whether or not my lines can hold against, uh, against the enemy Welsh forces. Because right now, the armor difference is looking very, very big. If we look at the left-hand side of the Welsh forces, you know, there's a lot of cloth, you know, javelin men there. There is some elite swordsmen sprinkled in there, but... Berserkers are just going to town right now. And there we have it. The spearmen are now being broken and routed back. This is going to open up the entire flank now. The general for the Welsh are going right round this left flank now. And the battle you know, is even right now. So it's no way that I'm 100% you know, winning this battle, even though it's looking good for me. If the, the enemy uh, general can come in and kill you know, Hammer and Anvil, rout some of my units, that's going to be the end of my force, especially if they get some good charges off. I think my general has also been slain right now, which is not good. And the final reinforcements are turning up. I am dispatching a unit of my own berserkers. 80 of them left in the unit, which is crazy. At this point in the battle, I could ask for no more as they go flying in. Ferocious. I love that charge. It's so awesome. The enemy general coming in here as well, charging away at my, uh, my huntsmen, my archers. And killing them is a sound strategy because you can try and affect the rest of my army's morale by just simply charging into the back of them. 
and trying to take army attrition into account because in a, in Attila and in Thrones of Britannia if you start losing big portions of your army the rest of the force isn't going to stick around and fight they are going to flee the battle so maybe trying to just take out and reduce my numbers as best as possible is a really smart idea here hitting away at the Eastman Hunters is great so I also managed to break these guys the Berserkers just coming in so clutch right now sending the Welsh back and Vance Vara is shifting in my favor. These Berserkers are still fighting. Guys, think of how long these guys, these dudes right here. The Berserkers have been engaged. Um, almost 300 kills now. 320 kills. That's simply insane. And I am going to be getting a huge break right here. All the Welsh forces breaking and fleeing. Just the quality wasn't there at the end of the battle. I think the Welsh used a lot of their really elite units right, out, right towards the beginning of the battle. Whereas I held back a lot of these Berserkers to the end. Also, I didn't even realise these were classed as Berserkers. I thought when I was building my army that these were just elite infantry. So I was like, yeah, I'll have them all. Because the, uh, the Seafire and Vikings don't get a lot of sword infantry. They obviously heavily rely on their axe infantry. So I was like, oh, cool, my best axe infantry. Let's just spam loads of them. Um, so maybe that, you know, multiplayer, these guys will need a cap or something in competitive matches because they're really, really good. But obviously, this is just, you know, a work in progress. So we're going to be seeing a lot more, you know, tweaks and balance changes. That's one of the reasons they did go ahead and delay the game a little bit is so they can fit in these balance changes. So I think this is my reinforcements coming around. The balance is turning in my favor now. I've finally taken the kill lead as well. I now actually have a man advantage. But I mean, look at this battle. The, the, the scale of bodies. If we just go from over here, that epic battle at the bridge, making their way into the open field. There's just bodies everywhere. Then this epic last stand here. The walls themselves are just littered with bodies. Uh, I finally managed to rout these guys and claim victory against the Welsh. You can see they're starting to flee now. I mean, just look at all the bodies on the walls. And then we have the street fighting. You know, this is what Total War Siege battles are all about. I mean, just look at that. There's so many points of engagement in this battle instead of just having one point of engagement, which has made this really, really exciting and a very, very fun battle. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this engagement. If you want to see more Thrones of Britannia, on the channel let me know and also let me know who you think i should play as when thrones of britannia does come out on the on the campaign as i would i'm probably leaning towards taking on wessex as a challenge and just trying to unite england under one banner as alfred would want but maybe alfred will die in the battle because your your dudes aren't immortal in thrones of britannia which is something i really dig as well overall i think thrones of britannia is a great game um, honestly, that's, that's literally my opinion. I'm not just saying that because I got early access. I have really enjoyed my time with the game. It's kind of got the, the nuance of the older games in it. And I think Jack Luster has done an amazing job with his design features and obviously his entire team as well. Um, but I definitely do enjoy the way Jack Luster does work. I think he has a very good old school type of mind, but also you know bringing new stuff into it as well. So I'm definitely going to be playing this game a lot more when it does finally come out. Be sure to drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of Friends Britannia down below in the description or in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one.